Another gorgeous day, and we thank the Lord for it. Say it with me, Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Remember Hebrews 3 and verse 13, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. We want to exhort one another every day. The Lord loves us all. He wants us all to be saved. That's why He sent His Son. It's necessary that we help one another through this life uh, this, on this earth that is filled with sin and sorrow uh, so that we remember righteousness and joy. We're talking about New Testament miracles, which certainly strengthens our faith in our Savior. We're defining a miracle just to the basic English definition, a surprising event inexplicable by natural or scientific laws, but something separate and apart from divine providence. Uh, The purpose, as we have seen over and over, is always to confirm God's Word. The emphasis being on the Word, not just on the miracle itself. Mark 16, 14 through 18, preach the gospel. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, and these signs will follow. Hebrews 2, 1 through 4, the word spoken by the Lord, confirmed by those who heard him. God bore witness with miracles. In 1 Corinthians 13, a time was coming when prophecies will fail, tongues will cease, knowledge will vanish. And Zechariah 13, a time when the evil spirit would depart out of the land, obviously no more need for the power to cast out evil spirits. So, as I said, we'll talk a bit more in detail about exactly when that time is, uh, when it was. Um, today, I want us to think about uh, a, a characteristic of New Testament miracles that I have made reference to in past devotions, but I want to uh, document it today. And that is the fact that when Jesus performed a miracle, it was not necessary that a person even be present in order for that miracle to take place. Isn't that an amazing thing? I mean, if these miracles don't strengthen your faith, I I don't know uh, what would. But to know that Jesus can do it this way uh, is just incredible. And uh, the first example that comes to my mind is Matthew chapter 8. And and we have brought this up uh, as examples, as an example of other facets of New Testament miracles. But today I want you to think about it regarding this particular facet. And that is that the person didn't have to be present. In Matthew chapter 8, in verse 5 beginning, it says, Now when Jesus entered Capernaum, a certain uh, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel, And I say to you that many will come from east and west and will sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. So, Here is, in in one of the devotions, we talked about the two times in the New Testament that it is said that Jesus marveled. This is one of them. He marveled at the incredible faith of a Gentile when there was such a lack of faith from his own people, the Jews. So here's an example where a man comes and he says, Come 
and and heal my or he 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 asked please heal my servant and Jesus says I will come and do that I will come to where your servant is lying sick and heal him he offers to come there but this man's faith was you don't have to come I know that you can do it here he had faith in Jesus as not only Lord over disease and sickness, but Lord over space and time, over everything. Now, there was no need for him to travel to come and see his servant, and Jesus healed his servant right there. But now there's another example I want you to look at because it's similar, but there are some details that I think even help verify the, this uh, fact even more. So uh, look in John chapter 4, <clears throat> beginning in verse 46. John chapter 4, beginning in verse 46. You know, Capernaum kind of came a, became a home base for Jesus. He was born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth, but uh, Capernaum um, became kind of his home base of operations eventually when he uh, began his uh, three years of ministry. And uh, this story in John 4 takes place. Uh, the two places that are mentioned are Capernaum and Cana of Galilee. And of course, Cana is where that first miracle took place where Jesus turns water to wine. So notice with me in John chapter 4, and uh, we're going to begin in verse 46. So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine, and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. <clears throat> so Jesus is in Cana of Galilee. The nobleman's son is in Capernaum, and he comes to Jesus. Verse 47, when he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea and Galilee, uh, he into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So here, this time, this man asked Jesus to come. Before, uh, in Matthew 8, the centurion just said, heal my servant, and Jesus offered to come. Here, this man asked Jesus to come. And so in verse 48, Jesus gives some mild reproof, I, I believe not only to uh, this nobleman, but also to the Galileans there uh, in general. And so uh, Jesus says in verse 48, unless you people, people is in italics, so he would just say, unless you see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. Verse four, and after that reproof, I suppose the nobleman could have just thrown up his hands and left, but he didn't. You see a tender father's love. Uh, that is expressed that will go to any lengths uh, to save the child that he loves. And so in verse 49 it says, The nobleman said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Now again, here is a pleading for Jesus to come where the child is. Verse 50, Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went his way. So Jesus said, you know, you've asked me to come to him. I don't have to. If you'll go home, you'll see that your son is alive and well. So in verse 51, it says, And as he was now going down, traveling back from Cana of Galilee to Capernaum, as he was on his way home, he had some servants. He was a nobleman, so he had servants, which is, you know, he could have sent his servants to ask Jesus to heal his son, but he didn't. This is a man's son, and he's going to do whatever it takes. So he went personally, even as a nobleman, even as someone of some uh, wealth, of some position, he went personally to Jesus. But now as he's traveling back, some of his servants meet him on the road. And it says in verse 51, As he was going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Your son lives. This was a time when he would have expected them to say, Your son has passed away. But it, they say, Your son lives. And so in verse 52, it says, Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. And they said, Yesterday, 
at the seventh hour, the fever left him. Now, this is an important fact. Capernaum is a day's journey from Cana of Galilee. It takes a day to get there. So that means the man had traveled a day to get to Jesus. And now he needs to travel a day to get home. And when he asks when his son got better, they say yesterday at the seventh hour. Well, look at uh, verse 53. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives. And he himself believed and his whole household. When he asked what time the better, they told him exactly. And he knew that that was exactly the time Jesus claimed that he performed a miracle and that the son was, uh, was alive and well. And it says he knew and he believed and his whole household believed. And folks, that is the purpose of these miracles. It's not to showcase talent. It's not to show off. It's not to do anything except to give power and punch and credibility to the Word of God to know that we can rely on it. Oh, aren't we thankful for these miracles, especially ones like this that show that Jesus was not only Lord over nature and over disease, but He's even Lord over time and space. He has no need to go and be in the proximity of someone to be able to work a miracle. Let's pray. Almighty God, Holy Father in heaven, we thank you so much uh, for the record of your word. And Father, we bow our heads to you today in humble reverence, recognizing you as the God, the only true God, the Lord over all, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and there is nothing that is too difficult for you. All you have to do is speak and it is done. And Father, we thank you so much for the record of these miracles that your son performed that demonstrate to us his great power. We don't want to be like those Galileans or, or those of uh, uh, th this area that we've just read about that Jesus said, unless you see, you will not believe. We believe, Father, in, and increase our faith. Help us to be filled with even more faith. We know that these miracles are real, and we thank you for the record of them. And the fact that your Son is Lord over all gives us faith that there is no difficulty in our life that's too difficult for Him to take care of for us. Please watch over us this day and help us to be men and women of faith. Thank you for loving us. Help us to love you and show that love by standing up for you and never backing down, never rebelling against you, never forsaking you. Forgive our sins, Father. Watch over us. When you're finished with us here, may we come to be with you forever in glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you for taking just a few moments as you begin your day to think about the most important thing we'll ever dwell on, the Word of God. You have a great day.